Hi, beekeepers. Jim Two, doing my somewhat monthly video that I do each month that uh, supports and adds insight, I hope, to the monthly articles that I write. This is for Bee Culture and it's for August 2022. Since you people tune in and watch these videos, and since others of you watch the videos and read my articles, here's some truthfulness for you. I don't really know where most of the articles are going to go when I begin to write them. I'm not trying to convince you that that's a gift I have. I'm telling you plainly that I'm as surprised as anyone when you finish one of these pieces and see, whoa, this is where I started and this is where it ended. I didn't see that coming. What had piqued my interest in this month's article was my own inability to answer my own common bee questions. Do I have a queen in this colony or not? Are these bees acting queenless? Why isn't this nectar flow progressing more uh, productively? Uh, why is that swarm so high and then why did it come right down to the ground? I mean, just question after question. And I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. And, and by now you should be able to say with precision, this is what the bees are doing. And my thought was, there is no precision to beekeeping. I put on supers, they didn't use them. I hear all these questions all my career that beekeepers both old and new have asked. But put that second brood box on, why do they swarm anyway? I mean, these are fundamental, easy questions that really don't have solid answers. So that's what I tinkered with, was how imprecise bee management is, how, how authors, I do it. I mean, you have to do it to write a book. You can't just be be vague and kind of amble all over the scene there about trying to answer a question why bees do what they do. You have to do it in a few sentences and move on or otherwise this thing will be a series of rambling books, not just one concise book. So bee management for the most part is just our best guess. And the reason that it's a guess is so complex as to be nearly indescribable. You see, we're trying to keep bees our way. We, I've, I've harped on this for years. We're trying to keep bees our way. So when we, we pine over why a box wasn't felled or why the swarm left or whatever, those are, are human management pr protocols imposed on natural populations of honeybees who have their own game plan. So we get a lot of imprecision. We get a lot of best guesses. We get some of those guesses right. We get a lot of them wrong. It's beekeeping. And over time, as beekeepers, such as I, age, Increasingly, you just begin to accept that ambiguity. You know, we'd laugh and chuckle. Ask one question to five beekeepers and you'll get five different answers. And that's funny to us. So I, I went through that discussion some. But here's the rub. That bees world is stunningly precise beyond any ability that we have to comprehend it. It's not just bees. Any other life form is that way. So what on one hand seems to be remarkably imprecise, on the other hand, is inconceivably precise. The mathematics that bees innately use to construct comb, to navigate with the sun, to find water sources, to live inside a pitch black dark hive, to fly out and use sunlight as a, a compass to find their way around. Oh man, it's just endless. And it, just when you think, oh boy, those bees are really 
something different, then you have to acknowledge the fact that they're going to a plant that's producing nectar or not, or responding to bees' presence, to sunlight's presence, to water, and that in its own way, the plants that those bees are flying to is just as complicated as the bee that flew to that plant to perform pollination services. So at that point, I'm overwhelmed. That was what the gist of my article. We see so much imprecision, so much indecisiveness, so much ambiguity in a biological and physical world that bees live in is stunningly precise and exact beyond our ability to comprehend it. Hey, it was a philosophical moment. It was just a philosophical moment. I love bees. They've really been helpful to me, really all my life, partic particularly in the last few years. So I hope you get something out of it. If nothing else, just think. I mean, just think. This is where I spend most of my time here, my virtual bee yard. The real bees are out back, the grass needs cutting, and they get left alone more often than not because uh, this is what takes so much of my time. Hey, thank you for reading, and thank you for watching this. I always sincerely appreciate it more than you ever know. Thanks a lot. Jim telling you bye.